listen here, people. GNR TV is just the thing to have. The streaming you should have right now. Let me tell you what it has. Let me tell you what it offers. For only $20 a month on two devices, you get over 2,000 channels, which includes pay-per-views, sports packages, movie channels, and all the regular channels you get with cable, including other states, other states' news channels, for example, all that good stuff. And what are you thinking right now? Well, why would I get it now when, you know, sports and pay-per-views really aren't happening? Well, it's going to start happening again, people. And on top of that, you got all the movie channels. So you can watch your HBO, Cinemax, Stars, all that stuff with GNR TV. And that's right, for only $20 a month with two devices. And if that doesn't get you to get it, being quarantined, being alone all day, you gotta give yourself some, you know, self-love. Well, they have an app. They have something for that as well in this app. It's called porn. And there is a ton of it. GNR TV streaming done right, $20 a month. You get all that awesome stuff. And I feel right after this video is over, you should go sign up and enjoy it. Oh, make sure you enjoy the rest of this video. All right. Well, another episode of Horror Research 30. Got my guy, an awesome podcaster from Stories from the Bar, Chris. He's not yep. the crazy Osborne's in Florida, so he says, but <laughs> that's a story for another day. Indeed. Go back and check out uh, the episode we did for my podcast, some fun Florida stories, and you'll hear all about that one. Oh, that was such a good time. What are you drinking on over there, Chris? I, for the first time ever, had some beer delivered today, and okay. it was glorious. There's a, uh, a local brewery called Frog Alley Brewing, and uh, I had them deliver a couple four-packs for me. So right now, I am drinking what they call the F&A West Coast IPA. Nice. And, and it's oh, delicious. Right. I have my little solo cup, shot glass. <laughs> my... <laughs> Beautiful Southern Comfort 100. You are just fucking getting liquored right up, aren't you? Yeah. Look at how frozen that bottle is. It's the, like, this is one of those ones. I mean, I feel like it's with all liquors, but especially the stronger ones. You know, they give you that heat, that burn when you drink them. Yeah. You want this cold. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, if I had, I'm not a big liquor drinker, but I would keep the bottles in the freezer if I had some. Mm-hmm. You drinking that straight? Oh, yeah. Take me straight <laughs> shot. I have water here, though, in case I get thirsty, because the other night I was gaming. I got thirsty, so I just kept drinking this. <laughs> <laughs> you were drinking liquor just because you were thirsty? Pretty much. I tell you, like, I just kept taking shots and taking shots. And that not is uh, not a real smart way to quench a thirst. It was not, because it did not work. I was like, oh, I should probably start drinking water. <laughs> but hey, man. You know. Hey, cheers, buddy. Cheers to you too, sir. So are we live? Can people hear or see this? They'll, well, they'll be able to hear when they come in here. Oh, okay. I should probably remind them that we're live, but they'll be able to hear it. And then with, um, oh, you're on Podbean too. Yeah, man. So with this, you can also, like with the live thing, you set up your live show. Yep. They can hear it. They can come in and like text, like Facebook live. And then there's four options for them to call in as well, which is pretty cool. Interesting. Which would be, you know. Certain episodes, I know you have a different type of show, but for certain episodes, it could be fun for you. Well, you know, with uh, the way things are these days, i going to try to crank out a few at home, see what I can put together. So, Crank out a few at home. That could be... That, that sounded wrong. <laughs> I mean, that did not sound like I meant it. I hope you're doing that at home and not, you know, at the bar. Well, I mean, it's your own business. And of frowned upon in public places. <laughs> Depends on where you're at. But, <laughs> I guess, fair point. <laughs> We went with your movie choice of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Killer Clowns, baby. And so tell me, let's get into this. What did you think of the movie? It's a fun movie. Like, I, I'm one of those people, I love horror comedies. That's, uh, yeah, that's what I tend to gravitate to when it comes to the horror realm. Mm -hmm. My girlfriend's big into uh, the actual scary and horror type movies. Like, yeah, those are, they're fine. I, I enjoy them. But uh, I don't know. I've always been more of a comedy fan, so I like that little bit of mix. Just the ridiculousness, the cheap B 
B moviness of it. Oh yeah, that's a big appeal for me. I love that's one. I love the cheese of those type of movies. I'm. I mean, as you know, I love all all types of horror. My favorite is slashers, but you can never go wrong with a nice horror comedy. My wife, on the other hand, <laughs> <laughs> this movie, and I don't care. She's told me this story plenty of times. I'm sure once I post it, she'll tell everybody. But I guess she's seen this movie as a kid. And this is she movie, really? Yeah, this movie's what made her afraid of clowns. <laughs> and she's like still afraid of them to this day. Well, this movie was made in 1988. So, uh, yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's pretty old. And on top of that, she doesn't like... She won't watch horror comedies with me too much. She's not really a big fan of yeah. them at all. Here and there, she'll watch some. But for the most part, she likes... She'll watch B movies, though, as long as it's not like a comedy movie. She will not... Like anything with Bruce Campbell in it, the she will here. not watch it. Really? Well, yeah, my girlfriend's are the same way. Not a Bruce Campbell fan. <laughs> I like Bruce. He's a good guy. Well, he's fantastic. But... Uh, yeah, I looked it up. Actually, speaking of slasher flicks, I uh, came across this little tidbit about the movie last night. It was originally just called Killer Clowns, but uh, they were actually concerned. People thought that would, if just that name would in- indicate that it was just a slasher flick. So mm-hmm. they added from outer space later on. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I mean, it makes sense, but oh, this movie was just. <laughs> You know, one character that had me laughing just because he was so serious and so mad all the time was the one cop. Oh, he had the older cop there? Yeah, he was. Mooney. Mooney. Pissed. He was just pissed. Swearing and yelling at everybody all the fucking time. And they're trying to warn him. Like, you know, if somebody calls me right now and says, Aaron, just kill the clouds on the loose from outer space, I'm going to take that, you know. I know what to do to survive. Yeah. You watch this, and you're like, okay, I know what to do. So, uh, should we... I'll mention what uh, the actual premise of the movie was. I mean, the title says a lot, but... <laughs> it does. It does. And I, people, before Chris dives into this, this is not based on a true story like a lot of the other movies I do, like Friday the 13th. This one's, this one's not real. Was Friday the 13th based on a true story? Well, that's just what I tell people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. But uh, when I was... I've, I've watched this movie a total of two times. Once a couple of years ago and then uh, this morning before we recorded this podcast. But uh, So I went and looked up some facts. So at least the description says when teenagers Mike and Debbie see a comet crash outside the sleepy small town that they live in, they investigate and discover a pack of murderous aliens who look very much like circus clowns, which they are mm-hmm. alien clowns. With a K, we should probably mention that. They, yeah. they can't see your background. Killer clowns from outer space. You guys will see this background. It's pretty damn awesome. So they try and lo- warn local authorities. Of course, no one, uh, everyone assumes their story's a prank. Meanwhile, the clowns just set about town harvesting and eating as many people as they can. <laughs> see, I'm watching this movie. My thought was the cotton candy. I love cotton candy. I have a terrible, terrible sweet tooth. I would have probably tr- I would have taken a bite out of it, like just seeing it there. You give me the cotton candy, I'm gonna eat it. Then you realize there's a bloody face in there or whatever. I'm gonna go, oh shit. Yeah, they uh, they the killer clowns keep the bodies of their victims in basically cotton candy cocoons. And uh, I've never seen cotton candy look so murderous and delicious. <laughs> I've I mean, never been be good. I've never been a big cotton candy fan, man. Really? Yeah, I don't know. I just never got into it. I mean, it's not my favorite. It's just, it's good. I like the smell of it, the taste, even though they all freaking taste the same. It's just a bunch of fucking sugar. It's a fun, it's a little fun piece of candy. Well, it's a fun kind of candy to have, I should say. It melts in your mouth kind of quick. Yep. I'm going to leave it at that because that's just <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I do. This movie, like you said, this is my, this is only my second time seeing it. My first time was, shit, a couple of years ago, too. I just happened to watch it with my wife. I think my brother told me to watch it. And it's a, it's fun, but it's like one of those ones I would definitely watch it again, but it's not like something I can just watch on a consistent basis. Like, for example, um, Thanks Killing. Love that movie. Yep. Every, every freaking, what the hell is that, Turkey Holiday? 
Oh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> What's that turkey holiday? Every Thanksgiving, damn there now. Since I've seen that movie, I watch it at least once, and I probably watch it leading up to Thanksgiving because I love that movie. So is that like a yearly tradition then? Well, for me, because my wife won't watch it with me, so I'm by myself watching it, usually drinking. Yeah, this uh, Killer Clowns is a movie you need some beers to really help you enjoy. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do. Or apparently, in your case, just straight liquor. Hey, something. Something to quench that thirst. Or to think you think you're quenching that thirst. You know. The, uh, what's, what was real interesting about it, and I remember hearing this a while ago, is the movie's kind of, it was coming, it came out in 1988. And, mm-hmm. uh, what I didn't know is it actually came out to fairly positive reviews. It has like a 70 something, maybe it was like a 77, I think, on Rotten Tomatoes. But, uh, for, they've been trying, they were trying to get a sequel made forever. Like the writers and directors, the set of three brothers, I think they were. Mm hmm. And uh, they were going to do it in 3D. Obviously, that hasn't happened yet. Or actually, from what I was looking up, it might not happen. It looks like uh, they were trying to get like a, another... They wanted to do a series of movies, like another three or four. Yeah. Either that or a television show. And then the most recent updates I could find when I went looking last night was Sci-Fi Channel apparently announced back in 2018 that it was in talks to for the rights for the show and then uh, at least to make a sequel and then after that all i could find was august of last year i guess the rights were owned by fox and they were actually looking to make a sequel mm-hmm. and then after disney bought fox they kind of just put the kibosh on it <laughs> just with a whole bunch of other shit that uh disney you know canned after they bought fox that damn disney and it was going to be in 3D still, which would have been fucking awesome. Oh, hell yeah. I would have watched it. Like, I don't go to the theater that much, but uh, I would have made a point to, you know, take a if half this, day and go. Yeah, if this if this actually went to theaters and wasn't like a straight to Blu-ray or DVD or Amazon, I would go see this in theaters. A sequel to it. Why not? Yeah, man. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. It, uh, I like the guns in this. I like the guns they have in this movie. The little ray guns they have. They uh, actually, as I was looking up other stuff, you know, the they have the popcorn shooting cannon there mm-hmm. that he's using. That was the most expensive prop in the movie. It was actually it actually fired popcorn like they had a little compressor in it. And I think it cost like seven thousand dollars. That worth it. That's uh, exactly. And, you know, that's how low budget this movie was, is that that was the most expensive prop. Or it was worth every freaking penny of it. And I love, again, going back to the B-rated movies and the horror movies, I love these low-budget movies because I feel with these type of movies, it's somebody that's having a good time doing it, but I feel like they're actually, they really are a fan of the horror genre. They're putting oh, yeah. it on it, whether it's, you know, comedy horror, serious horror, versus like, I'm not going to say all, but a lot of big-budget horror movies, they just, it's mo- it's more of a money grab because they know me as a big horror fan and the rest of us out there, Halloween's a great example. It was great. I thought it was a really good movie, but they know our asses are going to go see it. They know we're going to buy whatever comes out for it and all this, that, and the third versus these kind of independent horror movies. It's more of, I want you guys to really check this out. I want you guys to love this movie. And, you know, I have this small budget. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what I can do with this small budget, which I love. Yeah, and, you know, the great things about movies, the B movies like these is uh Mm -hmm. these people go into it with a specific vision like they want to produce the best movie they can obviously with the limited budget they have it's i mean they don't have the halloween name they don't have the friday the 13th name even you know probably the saw name at this point yeah but so you know they're go it's a passion project for these people it definitely is and i mean this right now is it's definitely a cult classic so you're going to get those fans from this movie that watched it from when it came out all the way up to you know when they're old enough to watch movies and they just love the movie because of the ridiculousness ridiculousness of this movie and it's just it's one of those movies where like um like i said it's a cult classic and you know how you know how there's those certain movies that come out that aren't that popular say within the first five to ten years it comes out but then 15 20 years later everybody wants to see it everybody wants to own it oh yeah there's a it's a lot of movies that you know will fail in theaters and then come out on home video of some kind and then just, mm-hmm. you know, go into that cult classic. And I, type. 
me personally, I could be wrong with this, but just because I stick with the horror genre, not just because of my show, but because I really love it. I feel like horror is one of the things I feel one. I feel like it's the best genre. Cause I feel like you can go in any direction. You can do horror comedy. You can do a romantic horror movie. If you really wanted to, you can do anything horror related to where it wouldn't, even if the movie's stupid, it wouldn't be a bad route. As crazy as that sounds. No, I mean, horror is an interesting genre because you really can mix it with anything, you know, as long as you do it right. Yeah. And come out with a quality product. Yes. At the, I'll say this at the very least, because this is a cheesy movie. It's fun, though. I like it. <laughs> but at the very least, you got to have like just something that really stands out. It could be like two or three scenes in a horror movie. People are going to go see it and people are going to enjoy it versus say like a Marvel type movie. They need to go all out for us to, you know, to plant asses in the seats. Or people, oh, yeah. I don't really, but I'll give you a great example. I talk about this fucking movie all the time. Everybody knows. Going back to Thanksgiving. <laughs> you just fucking love that movie, man. Listen, I don't know how I found it. I think somebody told me, oh, there's a horror movie with a killer turkey in it. I was like, I, I still need to watch that. I was like, I have to fucking see that movie. And I've seen it. And like, that doesn't work with, I don't think that works with any other genre. Like if somebody was like, Hey, there's a, a new Marvel movie out with a superhero turkey. Who's going to want to see that shit? <laughs> Who's going to want to see that? Like, what? What, what the I'm fuck? I'm not going to lie. I mean, my interest might be piqued, but I, I would not go out of my way to go see it, probably. Exa- see what I mean? Like, th- I'm, I'm not exaggerating. If they did, I know they never will, unfortunately, and it breaks my heart. Say I'm Thanksgiving, they're like, look, we're going to show Thanksgiving in theaters. I would go see it. I'd probably be by myself. <laughs> me and maybe like six other people no man i'd go with you that sounds oh, like a fun that sounds like a fun time we'd have, talk, and, we'd have to talk our mature buddy anthony to go in with us but ah uh, what a what a loser that guy is he's like the adult of us he probably have us sitting on one side you sit here you sit there you're not sitting by each other <laughs> don't make me get my belt <laughs> damn so uh, what are, what were some of your favorite scenes of the movie i'm curious i know um, uh actually you know one other interesting note that I came across was uh, the in I guess the original ending, the younger officer that kind of saves the day. Spoiler alert, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, originally was supposed to die in that explosion at the end after he kills the giant clown, but I guess test audiences didn't like that, so they ended up changing it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, one of my favorites, anything with the ray guns, I love. Anything with those freaking ray guns. Just because... It- you know what it is? Because it looks so cheesy and shitty, but it's so fucking awesome. Like, when they're shooting it, you see the, the pink lightning coming out the gun and hitting the person or whatever. I just, I love that. I don't know why, but I love it. The, uh, that was another thing about this movie, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and they really did not have a lot of special effects. It was really just all, you know, basic practical right. effects that they could do in rubber suits. Which is the best. Any horror fan you talk to, we love practical effects. The CGI stuff, I don't hate it. It's like a love, love like, I won't say love hate, love like relationship with it. But it's one of those things if they don't do it, had, for CGI it, for me, for horror, it has to be done absolutely perfect. It depends how it fits into the movie. Or, exactly. You know, the scenes that you're watching. Yeah. But nothing beats practical effects. They're just so freaking amazing. And another thing I respect about it is people who do those practical effects, the special effects in them. Is I say this all the time, and I don't do special effects, people. I know nothing about it, but I've discussed this with like producers, directors, and people who do special effects. I just throw a number out there. I'm saying it takes you like 20 hours, say, like to make a head, right? It takes you five minutes to make that head explode. <laughs> I know, doing? man. And that's... that's such a beautiful art. I just love that's one. That's another reason what makes me love and appreciate horror movies so much, with, especially with the special effects and practical effects and stuff like that, because I'm just like, Wow. It's, it's a lot of fucking work that people don't see. The hours that go into creating something and, you know, then just blowing it up in an instant. Mm-hmm. That, You're right. It's, it's ridiculous if you sit there and actually think about it. It really is. And I, as a matter of fact, was it last night or the night before? One of these past couple of nights, I did a podcast with some people from, um, I wish I could think of the movie now, but they're doing an indie, an indie horror movie, right? And I asked one of the special effects artists, I was, you know, pretty much what I said to you about how it takes them all that time to do it. And she was saying she loves that part of it, like making, say, the head, for example, and then exploding it because it looks so amazing on, you know, on camera. The scene looks so good. Like, this yeah. is what you do it for. 
that's what you're passionate about is making that thing to destroy it. And I'm just, cause me, I'm like one, first of all, I don't have the skill to make anything like that. And second, if I did, and then I have to destroy it after it's going to be tough. But at the same time, I, I guess I get it more now that you get that explanation. I understand the passion. I don't know if I've ever felt that kind of passion. <laughs> like I love beer and I'm always sad when I drink the last one. I mean, it might be about as close as I come. I can hear you. I hear you with that. I love yeah. Southern comfort. And until it hits the bottom, which I'm not going to touch the bottom of this bottle tonight. Not at all. If How much I just left. Oh, there's a shit. There's a lot left. Well, I mean, it's, it's nice to have goals. <laughs> oh no, that will kill you. Yeah. I don't want to be in the hospital. The, uh, one of the, uh, I think one of my favorite scenes from the movie by far was, uh, just when the clown comes up on his tricycle to that motorcycle gang that's outside of the motorcycle bar <laughs> and mm-hmm. they start, you know, insulting the clown and destroy his tricycle. So the little clown puts on boxing gloves and gives the guy an uppercut and his head just goes flying into the trash can. <laughs> she just- of destroying stuff. This and that's again. That's what I love about these type of movies is you can literally go in any direction, and there's gonna be there's gonna be a core fan, a core fans for this type of stuff. Always, 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 always. Why do we love this stuff? I really have no idea, but it's just it's beautiful. It's you know what it is. It's a beautiful art. I'll say that it really is a beautiful art because it takes talent, it takes skill. It takes a lot of patience, which I don't fucking have, to do this kind of shit. <laughs> no, dude, it definitely does. And uh, excuse me, time to take another shot, I guess. The uh, of course the lovable idiot brothers driving around in their ice cream truck for the majority of the movie. That would have been me and you. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony would have been the cop getting all pissed off at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> the sensible brother trying to save the day. Yeah. <laughs> that was oh man the ice cream truck those guys were so funny because i remember speaking it made of me guys. think of the, it makes me think of the game twisted metal did you oh, ever play twisted metal yes and that that's actually somebody i used a lot was the clown was it twisty was oh, i name? can't think of his name what was the clown's oh. name in twisted metal shit maybe it wasn't twisty maybe that was the guy from um american horror story but i used to use twisty a lot Hold on, I'm looking this up quick because now I'm just super curious. Mm-hmm. Needles, apparently. His name was Needles Kane. Oh, wow. I was way off. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Referred to as Sweet Tooth. That sounds a lot more familiar. Sweet Tooth, yes. That does sound a lot more familiar. Sweet Tooth. Sweet Tooth. Yeah. Sweet Tooth the Clown. <laughs> Oh man, these oh, man, I'm, yeah, fucking murderous clowns, man. And of course, being in an '80s movie, there was, mm-hmm. of course, being an '80s movie, there was a lot of big hair and mullets to go around. Yes, there was <laughs> tons of it, tons of it. Actually, one of my, I think, one of the cheesy, my favorite cheesiest scenes is uh, was close to the beginning. That uh, that old cop with the attitude problem, Mooney. He's sitting there at an intersection in his cop car and there's a teenager that's waiting across the street and he's drinking a beer. Mm -hmm. You can just see on the side of the can, it just says beer in big (laughs) letters. And he's holding two, you know, paper bags full of cans of the same thing. That's It's not even any kind of brand. It just says beer on the can. See, that right there is another thing. Those small little detail things where it's like you have a movie with a small budget. It's like, okay, well, I can't use Budweiser. You know, I got to get permission for this, that, and the third. So let me just, oh, write, yeah. let me get whatever kind of beer I have, but just get a can that says beer <laughs> so I can't get sued. It's, uh, it, they're, they definitely weren't selling any kind of in-movie advertising. Not at all. Or couldn't get any. Oh, yeah, which, honestly, and the crazy thing is looking back at this movie and then watching it now, seeing certain things in this movie, you're like, where the fuck can I get this shit? Like, where can I get a can of beer that just says beer on it? And that's <laughs> costume store maybe probably right yeah but maybe well it it is a little bit different nowadays especially with the internet era everybody everybody wants something that you know from a movie for example you know like this 
I want one of those guns, which I'm sure I can get a prop. Oh, obviously. You know, yeah. And as I was actually looking stuff up, there was a, a brief moment in the last, you know, 30 years that this movie's been out where there were a couple of different companies that actually made toys or, you know, related type stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I did not search enough to try to find any yet, but they're out there apparently. Oh, they definitely are. I've seen some at, um, as you know, I go to a, a shit ton of like horror cons and stuff. And you see, oh my God, you see so much stuff there, man, from this movie, just props, not, you know, not from the actual movie, but just little props people made or action figures, um, the movie, Blu-ray, DVD, VHS, which I don't know about any other genre of movies, but VHSs are really becoming very, well, they've been becoming very, very, very popular in the horror community. Like everybody I, wants them now. I could see that people trying to watch the older stuff. Even well, even with like newer, like even with newer movies, and like uh, for example, like the indie movies I was talking about. Now that they have the Indiegogo stuff, you know, where you can go and back the movie and buy like the Blu-ray or whatever, they're doing VHSs too now a lot. And I think now this is gonna. I'm gonna sound like I'm contradicting myself if that's the right word. I don't know. I've been drinking, people. I took about three or four shots. I think <laughs> he's rolling. But uh, with the VHS look, the the thing I miss about the VHS look is with horror is the graininess the gritty graininess of it because it makes the movie a little scarier in a sense because it looks dirty no no i totally get that for the horror genre that kind of makes that makes perfect but sense at the same time for the same genre i love the hd the blu-ray i don't have 4k so i don't know how good that looks people you know i don't have that kind of money yet <laughs> <laughs> you're not alone man i don't have a 4k tv see we're waiting for donald trump to so you know support us uh i'm I'm going to have to get one when the PlayStation 5 comes out. That's for sure. <laughs> yes. But yeah, like I, like I like both. I wish that um, when Blu-rays came out, if they gave you the option to look at like to watch it, Blu-ray or 4K, whatever, to watch it in, you know, the top quality that you have or VHS quality without the, you know, without the shittiness of the VHS getting stuck and all that bullshit, but just the graininess from it. I miss that so much. That would be that would be interesting. I mean, yeah, especially since you can't really find VHS players anymore. And it's it's not impossible. It is possible. Like I said, they're selling VHS. A lot of the Indiegogo's down, not all, but they are selling VHSs with their movies. So I feel like it is possible to do that as well. Let me ask you this. Me. Let's say the premise of the movie is you know a bunch of these teenagers are just making out on a hill, and then they see what they think is a comet crash nearby. Mm-hmm. So they are wandering around the woods trying to find it, come across a circus tent. Mm-hmm. What would you do if you were randomly wandering around the woods and came across a lit up circus tent? Well, this means I'm hanging out with white people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Going to bring race into it. All right. You know, I always do. That's true. Um, am I sober? I guess that's up to you. I'm going to assume not. Then I'm probably going to go in there like a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> just because like I'll well say, let me put it well yeah definitely not sober because even the even the kids and i use quotation marks on that because they all look like they were middle-aged yeah men and women playing teenagers and college kids we're all drinking yes good point but they could have been underage drinking man <laughs> uh, but yeah you know what <clears throat> i want to say my black instincts instincts would kick in and i would run but at the same time, it's like, if I, there's the beer can. <laughs> if I'm intoxicated, I'm probably just going to go just go see what happens. And like I said, say I go in there, say it's me, you, Anthony, and a bunch of other people. I'm going to try the cotton candy because you, when, right when you walk in the tent, they go through the thing, you see it hanging there. I'm going to rip some off and try it. I can't help myself. Blood flavored? I wouldn't know that. So Because you, you got to rip it off first, you <laughs> eat it, then you see. Because, you know, if you're high or drunk, you're not really going to pay attention to, like, what's behind the candy until after you no, eat it. You're oh, just happy to put something in your mouth and eat. Yeah. <laughs> and then boom that. So yeah, I probably would go along with it for a bit. I, uh, I was thinking about it. You know, I, I wouldn't run, but I wouldn't go in. I'd probably sit there and watch it for a while. Just watch. I don't know. See what happens. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> obviously the stupid teenagers go in there and then they come running out after the clowns find them. I love that the one clown made a balloon animal dog and was, used it <laughs> and used it like it was actually sniffing out their scent to follow them through same, the woods. You know how awesome that would be to have a balloon animal dog that can do that? 
right now. <laughs> That's all I would be doing. <laughs> like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? You're supposed to record. You got to go to work. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Let me. I got to take my dog out for a walk. It's a fucking balloon. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> That was that was one you know okay here's another scene right because I'm watching I keep watching it over and over the YouTube channel excuse me on YouTube I have the kill kill count going on yep one of my favorite kills is when the clown's doing the uh, the puppet thing with his hands the shadow puppets and he turns oh yeah to the yep. T Rex and kills the people like right in front of the cops and they start freaking out and they call Anthony and he doesn't believe him yep <laughs> just cussing him out <laughs> fuck you I was not <laughs> that part when he said fuck you like that. I laughed my fucking ass off. I was going to ask you, what was your favorite clown kill? Because I was kind of taking note of them as I was watching the movie again, because there's a lot of great ones. Yes. I, you, I love you, the shadow puppet one. The shadow puppet was great, where the you know the clown makes this giant dinosaur shadow puppet, and it just eats this cra- <laughs> crowd that, of people. That was awesome. The one where they kill the cop, the one serious cop, where they slam his head into the jail cell, that wouldn't... That could have been better. That was... I lo- That could have been better. I... I feel like that deserved a better, you know, visual death. I did love that they he used him as a hand puppet afterwards, like a ventriloquist. Yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> with little red cheeks. That yeah. that was that I did love. But what was your favorite kill? Um, you know, seeing that Rudin for the killer clown, seeing the old cop die, that was fun. But uh, I kind of really enjoyed. There's a scene where you know this teenager, and again, I use that term lightly. He's driving a car, and that clown comes up next to him on like an invisible motorcycle, mm-hmm. and forces the car off the bridge. <laughs> oh, that was See? just ridiculous. Yes, yes. And uh, what else was it? I know there was a clown that delivered a bunch of pizza to, you know, a woman wearing like a nighty and holding a glass of wine when she opened the door, and then he just shot her with a ray gun there. There was that one, and then there was the one I forgot what happened with the heart. Like right after that scene came with the candy hearts and the lady's looking back. It doesn't show her husband. She's looking back to the camera. Supposedly she's looking at her husband or her boyfriend. She starts smiling. Oh, thank you. And she gets killed. And uh, I'm trying to think what, oh, what am I? Uh, this wasn't a kill, but one of my other favorite scenes is when they get into the house to chase that main character, Debbie around. Mm-hmm. And she goes, she's running around trying to find a way out, goes to jump out of the window and the camera goes down and you just see four clowns there holding that little trampoline safety trampoline for people to jump out of windows i just cracked up i just gotta share this to my brother i kept forgetting to do that there was um okay so one person that's listening to us he said casey they turned him in he's talking about the one cop they turned him into a dummy because earlier in the movie he says you're not gonna make a dummy out of me yep which I, I love when oh, movies that's do right. that. Oh, that's right. Foreshadowing, baby. That. Yes. It's, it just makes it so well. I, yeah, foresh- foreshadowing's fantastic. And it's not ever, of course, something I ever pick up on on the, you know, the first watch through. And that's Maybe. not even something I noticed. But yeah, as soon as you said that, I remembered the scene where he's like, you're not going to make a dummy out of me. And they sure as hell did. <laughs> They sure as hell did. Is this a movie that you would recommend to others to watch? That have... Okay, let me rephrase that. That have your sense of humor. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if there's someone that's into, like... If they say they like horror movies, but, like, serious horror movies, no. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, I would mention it, but I'm like, you're not going to be into it, because, you know, it's you like the serious B movie stuff. ridiculous. Stuff well, like pretty that. much your, your girlfriend. She wouldn't want this. Oh she, God, no! <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. I, it, you know, she's not even a Bruce Campbell fan. It's oh. I don't. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. I know, but uh, I mean, I would definitely recommend it if you want a little humor mixed in with your comedy. Absolutely, definitely. <clears throat> I'm well, the same. I said humor in with your comedy. I meant humor in with your horror. But yes. I didn't correct you because, again, I'm not sober. <laughs> but I know what you meant. I'm trying to chug the beer. The problem, like, I love these Frog Alley beers. The only issue is they don't put the percentage on their cans. Uh, so, honestly, I have no idea how hard I'm getting hit by these. I hear you. I'm Well, I know what the, this is 100 proof. And I don't know what that means. But I know it's strong. 
the fifty uh, percent alcohol slash volume. Let's go. What did you What did you think of? Well, we mentioned the popcorn gun that they use to shoot popcorn being the most expensive prop in the movie. Of course, the popcorn's actually alive and, you know, turns into like those little clown piranha heads. I loved it. I, <laughs> see, I love, especially with, a, with a, um, a comedy horror, I love that silliness of it. I love the cheesiness of a lot of horror movies, but I love the silliness when it's like a horror comedy, the little silly shit that goes on in them. It just... It makes the movie better in a sense because it's like so much ridiculous shit is going on. What else is going to happen? And I'll be right back. I got to pee. Let me pause this. No problem. Thing. Where the hell is it? More. Okay. Boom. So we are back from our PP breaks. You wash your hands? Both of them. <laughs> <laughs> I hope people are washing your hands now. I mean, this Corona thing shouldn't be what's making you wash your hands. But if you weren't washing your hands before, I hope this is what's making you do that now. You should have been doing that from the start since you were like, what, three, four, maybe. I don't know how old you were. Two. But, you know, some people it takes them a little bit longer to learn. Some people wait 45, 60. That <laughs> So it looks like you got yourself a little celebration shot in your hand there. I can help it, man. Once I get started, I'm thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I'm cracking open another beer. This is, of course, my Frog Alley Refresh IPA. And uh, this one's absolutely delicious. Nice. Nice can, too. It is. My brother, Henry- if Anyone listening to this is around this Connecticut area. I definitely recommend getting your hands on some Frog Alley stuff because it's all great. Yeah, I had we went we got to go there again, man. I had their um, I don't remember what the hell I had there, but I like the there was like a, the second beer I got. I remember was like a sour. Oh, that's right. You had one of the sours, yeah. And I enjoyed it. I think it was a watermelon sour. It probably was. It was good. I definitely haven't had anything from there I don't like. And another cool thing about that place is I remember. Again, I was on your podcast for that episode. I had those bright ass red shoes, kind of like this oh, that's right, hoodie. <laughs> clown shoes, one might say. Yeah, yeah, you can say that. <laughs> but I remember when we got to go tour, take that little tour down to the brewery area. Yep. And we came back upstairs. The first thing I said was, "All I was thinking about was horror movies down here, like just how this could be a horror movie." It'd be interesting. I wouldn't mind checking out a horror movie. You know, focused yeah, on a uh, even. Yeah, with uh, you know, the main scenery as a brewery, that'd be interesting. And like I said, my brother Henry's in here with us. Henry, if you got, I know you're at work, playing with your nipples and making uh, making logos or something. But um, when you're done playing <laughs> with your nipples, you can type. What was your favorite kill in this movie? Uh, killer clowns from Killer Clowns from Outer Space. You were the one who introduced me to this. Yeah, you really only kill? need one hand to type, man. Yeah, but. He's light skinned and they they're really fascinated with their nipples. They like to have their nipples out a lot. <laughs> He's light skinned? Yeah. Boss is near. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, I'm here and boss is near. So stop playing with your nipples. And a, even more of a special shout out to Frog Alley because they fucking delivered beer to me today. <laughs> That's thanks awesome. to all this I didn't, quarantine how, stuff. How did that feel to get beer delivered to you? Like it's amazing. Has- He's the, they're out there doing God's work, I love al- along with, of course, you know, the nurses and hospital oh, well, staff. Yeah, yeah. But we're, you know, we're me and you aren't serious, especially on this podcast. <laughs> that has to be such an amazing feeling to get some alcohol delivered to you. It's the first time I've ever had it done, and there was no way I was not going to do it at some point, just because I gonna, never. Had you're it done. definitely going to do it again. Oh, yeah. I know that. There's nothing like getting, you know, having beer show up at your door. <laughs> I think the only thing missing is pizza. Uh, I, d- I had pizza for dinner. <laughs> oh, see, see, that's, I want some pizza. I'm going to text my wife and see if she'll throw pizza in the oven right now. I'm thinking about it because I want some pizza now. I don't know what it is. No matter what I'm drinking alcohol-wise, whether it be beer, Southern Comfort, the eggnog stuff or whatever, pizza is just a great, great thing to divulge on. I guess that's the right word. Indulge. There you go. 
<laughs> He's more wordy than I am, people. So my yeah. okay, I got a I got a question for you. What okay. is your what is your um your go to food or snack when watching? It doesn't have to be horror because I know you said you're more comedy horror. But when yeah. watching a movie, I uh, I don't know snacks for when I'm watching a movie. I don't eat a lot of snacks when I'm watching something for the first time that I really want to pay attention to. Okay. If uh, I love cheese and crackers. Like, uh, I usually have some kind of supply of, like, crackers and cheese to cut up with some pepperoni or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's one of my, like, favorite little snacks in general. I don't have a big sweet tooth. Maybe chips. Okay. But uh, I'd have to say probably, like, you know, like cheese and crackers. But like I said, if I really want to focus on something for, like, the first time, I'll sit there and, you know, drink and get hammered while I do it. But that's something about the chewing and the sound of the chewing. I'm like, I really want to be able to hear what I'm watching. Yeah. Now, what if it's a movie like something you've seen before and you just, you're just you just watching it just because you enjoy the movie? Or, oh, yeah. Like, or like, like for this. For example, for coming on this show, watching a movie you already watched like this or any Bruce Campbell movie. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, cheese and crackers, like I said, I usually have on hand of some kind. Okay. Uh, and chips. Maybe some cookies. Nice. See, people... What I got out of him is white people love cheese. Hey man, I got I mix fruit in there every once in a while too. I love those really? fucking little halos. Those I'll eat three or four of those at a time at least. My wife loves cheese too. She's she's Spanish and I mean come on, they love cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Spanish people love cheese, okay. Quesadillas have cheese in them. Tacos. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what else. But they love cheese. But my for me, um, Honestly, my like a go to is like you said, kind of kind of like a quiet, quiet kind of food. It doesn't have to necessarily be junk food. If it is popcorn, chips, something it's it's the idea is something I don't have to focus on the actual snack as I'm trying to put it together or eat it Mm -hmm. so that I can actually focus on what I'm watching. If that makes sense. But I love um. (laughs) <laughs> my brother said big titty clowns I loved as a kid <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, <clears throat> as far as I, it goes pizza pizza and wings is such a good oh yeah, yeah man because you, you have such a good flavor a really good flavor no matter what kind of pizza you like any kind of topping you like and then fucking love pizza you can't wings. go wrong with wings that are nice and crispy and it's not, it's not a loud food. It's a good food, especially when it's nice and hot. Pour some hot sauce on it, whatever you want on it. And that's like, that's like my go-to, especially for horror movies, because I'm like, I want to focus. I want something that I can like pick up and eat and not have to like look down at the plate like spaghetti. Yep. That's a pain in the ass to eat while you're trying to watch TV, because you got to look oh, yeah. down and you're spinning on the fork soup, stuff like that. But pizza is like the perfect, you pick it up with your hands. It's not too messy. Wings can be a little messy, but it's still not too, too bad. Yep. And you're, you're home watching horror movies naked anyway, so who cares? <laughs> you watch your horror movies naked? I'm not going to say that I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. It's your house. Person. You can do what you want. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, one other thing I want to mention, like, on top of Frog Alley actually delivering, which mm-hmm. was fantastic, it is a local place, and, it, you know, obviously right now it's more important than ever to support the local places that you can yes and i want to put this out there and i want to say it more and i want to put it out there more post it more but while this whole crazy epidemic is going on and again i want to post it more anybody who has like a small business and all that good you know small businesses i would love for you guys to come in these excuse me when i'm doing these live shows come on in here and hit the button to call in live and promote your business you got like 30 seconds to a minute to promote your business just because I want, you know, anything I can do to help, I'll help. And obviously if you're horror related, share that in the horror group with your horror businesses and all that good stuff, because I really want to help as much as I can, but any, any type of business call in horror businesses, call in and also share in the horror group. Yeah. And, uh, what's great is like the podcast I do stories from a bar. Like, uh, I'd, 
initially, I just loved going to places, you know, drinking and chatting with people. That was kind of the inspiration behind it. Mm-hmm. And in that process, I just got to know a lot of really incredibly hardworking, awesome people running all of these local small businesses. And it's been an honor of mine to be able to kind of promote them as I just kind of hang out and have some drinks and chat with them. You know, it it was like a win-win for me because I, of course, love drinking these beers. I love talking to local artists and things like that. And it's not hard to find people that are willing to talk about their business for sure. You do. That's so true, man. And what I respect about what you do is uh, people are going to start slurring because I'm really feeling the Southern comfort right now. He's really been chugging those shots, man. (laughs) And I got one poured right in front of me, but like, like with your show, I listen to I listen to like every single episode so far, and even including the ones with me. But um, I love how you really promote these businesses just to do it. I mean, you do it because you love recording, you love the podcast, but you're doing it. You're helping these local businesses. You're helping these small businesses out. Because I mean, you went to the city. That's not really yeah. Good for us. But you're helping these small businesses out. You're not looking for anything. You're just doing it just because you enjoy recording. You enjoy drinking. Which we all it's, uh, yeah I mean it's something I enjoy I'm not gonna lie the idea of a free drink every once in a while sounds nice but uh, <clears throat> you know that's not what it's about it's just one of those things where like I kind of caught the podcast bug of course helping out Anthony getting to know some other podcast mm-hmm. people I'm like well what do I enjoy doing and I've always enjoyed going to you know the local places having a few drinks and chatting with people it's like we live in a real we're fortunate to live where we do in the upstate New York area, the Albany, Schenectady area, just because there's a lot of awesome local and small restaurants, breweries, and things like that. Mm-hmm. So, and, you know, it's, especially during this pandemic thing going on, it's more important to, you know, if you can, support them however you can. I agree with you 1 million percent. Even if it's as simple as just giving them a shout out on your Facebook group, your Facebook page, your podcast, or whatever, your YouTube channel, or, you know, financially if you can support them by getting a few beers or whatever the case may be and the thing i like about it though again going back to your show is i me personally and i'm sure you feel the same way and i'm sure henry feels the same way is i'm just going to call them the mom and pop shops because that's just like the name quote you know i'm doing the quotations you guys will see when the video comes out yeah but it's like they really care about our business they really care that the customers are happy and come back versus like a a big name corporation they can give two shits because they're like look you fuckers are going to come here either way because you need some whatever. You need toilet paper. This yeah. You need toilet paper. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're going to end up having to go to the big places for occasionally for things anyway. Mm-hmm. But when I can, I try to, you know, buy the local stuff. I mean, even in some of the bigger supermarkets, you can find the local products, which is another great thing about the general area. Yes, that's very true. And again, back to Frog Alley, I was on one of your episodes. I know we mentioned this a little earlier and... That place is amazing. If you haven't been there, you guys should definitely go. And you guys should definitely check out Stories from a Bar. It's an awesome podcast. He talks to so many different people. And check out their businesses, man. It's freaking amazing. Like, it's just, I like listening to these things to where, like, I like how people, you're like, look, I started this business because of this. It could be because of a family member, because whatever the case may be, I started this business because of this. And I really enjoyed this business because of this. I got into it because of this, whatever the case may be. And it's just, it's cool hearing that backstory. And my brother said, uh, talk about clown titties. So hey, are these clown titties, uh, are they different colors? Are they a certain color? Like what, what's up with these clown titties? Go I ahead. Mean, would they, would they not be? <laughs> you say that like it's an actual question. Would they be, okay. Okay. Would they be clown titties with cotton candy nipples? Or where they have what? What's your favorite candy? What kind of say they're clown titties? You know, it's a big titty. I and love nipple, starbursts. The nipple is your favorite candy. Interesting. I do. If I had to rank my either Airheads or Starbursts, you know what I really miss? Where Starbursts made a version of Twizzlers. They called them Fruit Twists back in the nineties. Mm-hmm. That was my fucking favorite candy ever. They discontinued it, and I hate them for it. <laughs> <laughs> and I respond to every Twitter post I, of theirs I see that I can, just saying, bring back fruit twists. Fruit twists. I've gotten no response yet. I'm just I waiting have, for them. I'm waiting for them to block me. I have to say, my favorite candy is, especially if I'm high, is Starburst jelly beans. And I have a big fucking jar right here. 
Oh, those are Starburst jelly beans. I didn't know that, or I would have been chowing on those last time I was over. Next time. I have a shit ton more in the, our drawer over here. So Starburst yeah. jelly beans, I don't even care what color. It could be any color, just multiple colors. That's my clown titty nipple candy. <laughs> Henry, what is your clown titty nipple candy color? What is your, not the only, what, what is the candy? Not just the color, but what is the candy? That's the most important thing. True. <clears throat> you, uh, well, to get back on the clown topic, you remember a few years ago, I don't remember how many years ago, it's only been like two or three, it seems like, where clowns were like literally coming out of the woods all over the country, scaring the shit out of people. Yes. And <laughs> me personally, like I'm all for that as long as you're not harming an individual, like you're not kidnapping, because like they, they had that and then they had like people like messing with kids, like kidnapping kids and all that. Now, if you're just no, dude, out, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. Fuck you. We're not into that. But if you're just like joking around, scaring people, I'm 100% all for that. I feel like that's funny. Well, leave, you, leave old people alone, though. And I'd say uh, stay out of the ghetto neighborhoods. I don't want you guys to get shot. And leave my father alone because that nigga's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's really fun to do a Google search on is I was looking up like, you know, real killer clowns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do a Google, Google search on clown beatings because there is some great stuff out there. Clown beatings. I have to look that up. That's I'm probably going to laugh at that stuff. Like, I don't know, man. I feel like, I feel like if a clown jumps out of jumps out at you out of nowhere, you got to beat that clown till there's nothing left but paint on pavement. <laughs> okay. Since you said that, right. Say you and your girl are out, a clown jumps out and you go to beat him on pavement, but you lose. How do you save face? <laughs> Can't lose, man. Not an option. That's, that's, that, like, that's, I'm not going to say that's like a fear of mine. That Losing to a clown? Like, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sticking to the top because I know my wife is afraid of clowns. And she's Spanish, so she probably has something. Well, obviously, if you lose, she divorces you and moves on with her life. That's probably true. <laughs> this, this motherfucker can't protect me. <laughs> That is that's the one test you needed to pass and you couldn't do it. That you know how embarrassing <laughs> that would be? Like, yeah, man, I got a divorce. I mean my girl broke up because I got beat up by a clown in front of her. <laughs> I got beat up by a clown in front of her. Like, yo, you didn't have to take that fight. No, he jumped out and she's scared of clowns. So you had I, no I, option, I, man. It's even more of a thing issue for you. It is. It is. Oh my gosh! I it's it's t I'd I'd rather fight Mike Tyson so I have a a legitimate reason to why I lost. But yo, this motherfucker used to box and he can still throw <laughs> hands. This he can, no, there's I don't care if Mike Tyson's ninety years old on his deathbed. I still don't want to take a punch from him. No, I'm a, listen. I'm a, here's people I will not fight unless I absolutely abs. No, fuck that. I won't fight him. Mike Tyson, <laughs> my father, and John Jones. Them niggas, I don't want to mess with. Everybody I else? I don't know I'm your not, father, but if you're putting them in the same category as Tyson and Jones, I don't want anything to do with them. Well, I'll put it like this. My father's 75 years old from down south, and he has legal guns. So he's not going to fight me. He's going to shoot me. <laughs> okay. I can't, I can't punch a bullet. I mean, I could punch a bullet, but it's not really going <laughs> to. You really get, only get one shot. Yeah. <laughs> and he has like that. You like what I did there? One shot? Yes, one shot. <laughs> Let me take that shot. Yeah, you do that. You chug that shot. That's right. Not only that, but my fa I feel like everybody from the South, like the country South has that, especially from, like I said, he's 70-something years old. Old people from the South have that weird strength. Don't know where it comes from, but they have that strength where it's like, motherfucker, I will kill you with this peanut. <laughs> and I just believe him. <laughs> Do you have a peanut allergy? I don't, but so, I feel... So that's like, even more impressive. I, I really do feel like if my father wanted to kill me with a peanut, he'd find a way. Even if he puts it in his gun and shoots it. <laughs> shoots it. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, shit. All okay, right, man. People. Back to the uh, killer clowns from outer space. So what do you tell people when you go to recommend this movie to people? I say turn your... This is one of those movies... I've said this plenty of times on the podcast. This is one of those movies where you turn your brain off and just kind of have a good time with it. If you smoke weed, get high. If you drink, have a drink. If you don't do either, turn your brain off and just have a good time. 
And I'll say turn your brain off for the sober people more than us people who drink or smoke, which I do both, because we're turning our brain off once we get drunk or high. That yep. the brain's off. And you just sit back, enjoy it. Don't take the movie too serious. Be ready to laugh. Watch some ridiculous kills. Eat some cotton candy and popcorn. Masturbate. That's normal <laughs> stuff. That's a weird array of options, but all right. <laughs> My brother said I turned mine up with meth. Wow. Okay. <laughs> just, just wow. This this really took a turn quick. Yes, it did. It, if he wasn't working, I know for sure he would call in and probably say something crazy. But hey, <laughs> I, I want to meet your brother. <laughs> you when he comes out from Colorado again, and make sure we. Matter of fact, Henry, next time you come out from Colorado, we and Chris, if you're cool with this, we're gonna be on stories from a bar. Um, we have to do a statesman series. We want it to be. As a matter of fact, we could do it via Zoom too. Does he live out in Colorado? Yeah, well, let's do it. We can do a Colorado one. Let's do it via Zoom statement series, Colorado. And we want it to be, as I requested before, we want it to be minorities this time. All minorities. minorities. Yes. Brown and black people. Yes. <laughs> when? He said when. We'll, we'll I don't figure know. that out. We'll, fig- we'll figure it out and get back to him. Yeah, Chris is cool as shit, though, man. He's, I met him at... Um, as a matter of fact, I met him at that con that you couldn't go to because your wife made you, made you move to Colorado and you were mad about it. You had an attitude for like... God, God, I mean, how's he doing in Colorado? That's pr- a pretty white person state. He's light-skinned, though. He's doing good. Oh, okay. He said, <laughs> he said for the podcast, brown, black, and in between. <laughs> brown, black, and in between. I'm always down for racial profiling, friend. <laughs> he, he's, like the, um, the, he's like a Mexican color slash Drake color of black. Okay. He's around that complexion, but he looks like so many different people. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna do a, we're gonna do a Colorado this, Statesman series and it's Oh this guy this this just got racist and weird. It's so fast. <laughs> he, I, I'm gonna make it better for you, Chris. He's just as immature as we are. Okay. All right. So <laughs> we're great. <laughs> we're gonna this is gonna be a fun fucking thing. And yes, right. Henry, def, I know you have five bean. Go check out Stories from a Bar. Download it. Follow it. It's a great fucking podcast. He's on Instagram also, Stories from a Bar. Yes, sir. You don't have an Instagram, do you? I don't, but I, th- I might make one. I'm thinking about it. Shit. It's not like it takes any effort. I, I just, I don't, I'm not, I, like, I, I don't mind my Facebook. I'm going to get back on Twitter, I guess. And I guess I should make a horror story. 30, um, Even Anthony finally started one for, you know, <laughs> video game crosstalk. I want to hug Anthony. I miss him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't see him anymore. He works in a different building. I miss him so much it hurts. <laughs> I used to see him a lot back in the day when we used to work together, because uh, he used to have uh, fight parties for UFC. So I used to see him all this okay. time. Okay. If you left out the UFC part, that would have been really odd. <laughs> yeah. And of course, I was still the same way. I think I introduced Anthony to Two Girls, One Cup. And oh, he, God. Yeah. He, he looked at me different after that. but Of course you did. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the normal reaction. He, I, I had to do it. I, you know, it, it's one of those things where it's like, I think Henry was there too, actually. He said it's a classic. It's one uh, of those things where, you know, you want to introduce it to your, you know, well, back in the day. I'm just, I, I, have my, I have my head in my hand and I'm just shaking my head. It was funny. It was, uh, it's unfortunately not something I'll ever forget. No, I would watch it again, though, at least twice. Oh, God. I'm going to need a <laughs> break from this friendship for a while. That's, dang, it happens. It happens. <laughs> social, what is it? Social distancing? Social distancing. Oh, man, I can't even talk right. Physically and virtually. Yeah, it happens. All right, man. Stories from a bar. Awesome podcast. How can we intertwine this with Killer Clowns? Stories from a bar and Killer Clowns. Uh, I, I mean, I guess we could dress up as clowns and go out once this quarantine and virus nonsense passes. Drunk? I, you say that like that? Like there's <laughs> not another option. <laughs> All right. I got a question for you, though, because, again, you're a good friend of mine. What made you start podcasting? I want the people to know, like, what made okay. you start podcasting? For, for anyone that might not know, uh, 
I, I mean, I guess I have Anthony to thank, our good buddy from Video Game Crosstalk, mutual mm-hmm. friend who, if it wasn't for him, Aaron and I might not have, you know, met each other. That's true. But uh, I worked with Anthony. He started his podcast, Video Game Crosstalk. I started talking to him about it, started uh, helping him out at a couple cons. Him and his wife had a baby. So, of course, his free time went out the window at the time. Mm-hmm. And so I started helping him with some social media stuff, talking to a couple other people that did podcasts, and I, I just kind of caught the bug. I went from not doing a podcast to thinking I want to do it to doing it all probably within a week and a half. Thanks to, you know, Amazon and YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've just been rolling. Actually, I'm coming up on two years. Nice. uh, Next month in April. Awesome. Congratulations on that. Mine was January. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. And congratulations to you. One of the the really cool things that I, I mean, I I feel weird when people compliment me or anything on it because, you know, it's something I do is just kind of like a fun hobby. Mm Mm-hmm. So when I get a compliment, it's always awkward to me because it's not a position I've ever been in before. But uh, for the podcast really focuses on local 518 type, you know, bars and not just bars, but, you know, just people I think will be interested in general artists. I try to I'm trying to expand it a little bit. And, like I love beer. I love music. I'd love to get a little more of the art scene mixed in. Mm hmm. So and the numbers have been really good for it. It's it's been pretty impressive for it being such an area specific podcast. I feel like, and I I feel really grateful for the reception I've received. People are reaching out to me from time to time to come in and, and, that want to be on the podcast. So it's awesome. Mm-hmm. That feels so freaking good. Like with with mind with the horror thing. Like I'm getting indie horror actors, actresses, producers that are like, hey. I've heard about your show or I've listened to your show. I would love to be on your show or just horror fans in general. And I, I love that fact because it's like, again, with you, what you said, I would, I'd never expected anything like that. All I expected was like, just for, for example, when I started this podcast, it was my brother, Henry, it was my, my brother, Rob, my cousin, Michael, and some other friends, just friends that would come over my boy, Chris, come over and just record with me and it went from that to just meeting other horror fans on Facebook to have them come on here and eventually you came on here yep. I've been waiting for Anthony's punk ass to come on here he wants to do uh, he wants to do that Nicolas Cage movie on- no it's Shaun of the Dead man Nicolas Cage isn't in that he was telling me about this the other day you gotta watch Shaun of the Dead and talk to Anthony about it that I will. movie is fucking awesome he wants to do what's it, what is it color it's color something the H.P. Lovecraft movie, the new clip. See, the thing with Anthony, I love him to death, and I love, I respect him. He knows I do not like Nicolas Cage at all. I want to punch him in his mouth. Not Anthony, but Nicolas Cage. So he wants to do that Nicolas Cage movie that's like semi-horror, the Cthulhu thing. I don't, I, I don't know which one that is. It's color. It's like color of space or something. Color of, I don't know. But um, I'm going to do it. But again, back to this. This whole podcasting thing, it's so, like, with me, with this stuff, like, I've talked to so many people, fans, and, like, indie horror people, it, it, it's so rewarding, and then, like, again, like, I go to, um, I go to a bunch of cons, scare cons, like, the biggest one I go to a lot, and I get to go there for free, media pass, and all that stuff, and it's, it's and I get to be on a bunch of panels and stuff, and it's, you would never think of it. You know what I mean? Like with a podcast, you're just thinking like, hey, I'm just going to record and talk shit with some friends, which is also amazing and fun. But as far as what, where, when I'm going, I'm drunk people, so bear with me. <laughs> but I, I never really thought that I would go as far as it has gone. And I never thought I'd be so many amazing people. You included, Chris. Yeah, man. Or Anthony, but like with the, um, what, what kind of, Empire State Comic Con. Yep. That, and the funny thing was, was a, <laughs> the reason why we have these jokes about Anthony, like being our dad, being the disciplinary is because me and Chris, I don't remember if Anthony was recording or not at the time, but we were just taking things way too far. Oh yeah. Sober. And he was, I was like, trying to get you to go talk to, uh, who's the guy that played, who played the Hulk. I can't think of his name. Um, TV show. 
Lou Ferrigno. Yeah, I was trying. I wanted you to go introduce yourself to Lou Ferrigno as the Black Hulk. Oh, I should have. I, I should I, have. I, I wish I did. Yeah. But you know what's funny about that is I don't remember his name, but the guy that played Roger Rabbit, it was the day before you came, I believe, right? He came to Anthony's table, and it's just me there. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, it was me and my wife. And you know how Anthony had those bracelets, the rubber yeah. bracelets together? Yeah, 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 yeah. He started picking them up and tossing them over whatever Anthony had on, Anthony had on, on the, um, the table. Excuse me. I didn't know who he was, so I was getting <laughs> mad, right? But I like I didn't let my I didn't let my black rage like take over and just go nuts. So he's doing all this shit. I'm just sitting there like this, like, what the fuck? What is he doing? Like, I'm about to like in, in my mind, I was like, I'm about to fuck this dude up because he smack down Roger Rabbit. He's being really disrespectful to Anthony. Anthony, like a brother of mine, as you are as well. I don't want this shit to go down. But I was like, I can't punch him in his mouth because one, I'm at a fucking big ass con. It's awesome. It's an awesome con. It's a fun fucking con. And two, it, it just wouldn't look right. I don't want to make myself look bad or anything look bad or my wife look bad. So after he does whatever he's doing, he's like tossing the um the wristbands over. What, one of the things Anthony had on the table, I think it was like the magnet thing that you flip over and the yep. falls through. He leaves and my wife is laughing. She was like, Do you know who that was? I was like, I don't know who that was, but I want to punch him in his fucking mouth. And she was like, That's the voice of Roger Rabbit. And I was I looked at it, I was like, You couldn't tell me this the whole time <laughs> the whole time this shit was going on. You couldn't just say like that's who that was. Cause mm-hmm. Anthony was walking around at the time. Like I helped him that weekend. So he well, we both helped him that weekend. So he was yeah. like, walking around and shit. All right, man. I gotta Start wrapping things up here, unfortunately. That's fine. Plug your plug your page, plug your Instagram, your Twitters, your everything. I pre- Yes, anyone that wants to check out Stories from a Bar, you can, of course, find it on Facebook, uh, Twitter, at Stories F-A-B, and Instagram. I will love you forever for, of course, liking and checking out the podcast. Uh, especially if you're in the 518 area, you're curious about bars and breweries around the general area. Uh, I greatly appreciate it, of course. Yes. this Chris is fucking awesome, guys. Just follow for stories from a bar. I'm drunk right now. I'm about to take another shot. But follow stories from a bar. Follow Video Game Cross Suck. Or anything that we always talk shit about them, but we love them to death. If it wasn't for Anthony, me and Chris wouldn't have met. So this, uh, this, 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 this partnership or whatever wouldn't have uh, happened. I'm drunk as shit right now. Holy fuck! I can't <laughs> <get straight. laughs> But no, seriously, follow stories from a bar. Follow video game cross talk. Follow horror with search dirty. I have some shit I want to tell you guys about, but I'm gonna wait until I talk to Anthony and Chris. And. Yep. Yes. All right, man. But thank you all for listening. As always, I'll see you in your nightmares. Cheers. Thanks again.